me you don't know the language. I, I'm not trying to be offensive. It doesn't matter. I don't uh, need to know the language to know what the word Thale says. I Brandon Tatum, brother, I'm almost embarrassed for you. Welcome back, Smart Christians. My name is Corey Miner, and if you haven't done so already, please feel free to hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell notification. That way you'll be notified in the future. Also, please remember to hit the like button. That way YouTube will kind of push this video out. If you're ever confronted by someone or something that shows you that you just simply don't know something or you're just misunderstood and they can kind of enlighten you a little bit, it would do you well to listen. And that's been what's happening lately although the brother's not really listening, Brandon Tatum has talked about and issued these um, requests for people to debate him, although he's not really taking on a lot of, a lot of comers. However, he found a taker. I tried to uh, initiate contact to debate him, but he found a taker who took him to school, basically. And his pride is not allowing him to see where he's wrong. He would rather win the argument, uh, or at least try to save face, then come to the realization of what the Bible actually says. So I want to play you a little bit of this clip to see the interaction and to show you one, how pride can kind of get in the way of you seeing things, but also try to explain to anyone, particularly Brendan, who still doesn't quite understand what the Bible is trying to convey as it pertains to John one and one using the Greek. Is because you made the comment that because Theos is articular in the second clause and not articular in the second clause. Therefore, it's indefinite rather than definite. Well, there's the the definite article of ho in front of Theos. That's right. In the first in, stanza. In, in the third clause, it says kai Theos ain halagos. And in that case, Theos is a pre-verbal predicate nominative, which means not a god, but is referring to what the word is by nature. Hey, am I right or am I wrong? Yeah, you're wrong because no, how am I wrong? pointed out you okay. keep saying scholars, 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 but you couldn't give me one. I, I don't know their person, names. I hear them I'm debate. Person, I hear well, them debate their, James White. If, yeah. If if you don't know their names, here's my point. There's only one person in the conversation who does know Greek. And so if you're going to contradict that, you simply have to bring a scholar. You haven't. Listen to what it says in the third in the third verse. It goes on to say, "All things became through him." Di altu egeneta. That is explicitly masculine. It's referring to a person, not an impersonal thing. In masculine verse 10, does not. It says he was in the world. It says he was in the world, and the world was made through him, but the world did not recognize him. Clearly, it's referring to a person. In verse 12, no. it says, To all who received him, to them he gave the right to be called no. the children of God, to those who believe in his name. All That's the translation that I heard debated, and it, that makes more sense than trying to say, Jesus, John is actually talking about Jesus, but he never used the word Jesus. He should have used the word Jesus, if, but why, he, okay. why didn't he use the word Jesus? Go ahead. Okay, so you said it makes a lot more sense, but only if you don't know Greek. So he has said some things that are a little bit technical, some things that maybe we don't talk about or, or the verbs that we don't use often in just regular conversations throughout the day. And unless you're an English teacher or unless you've been studying Greek, some of this conversation might even go over your head. So what I want to do is I don't want to spend too much time on Brandon, uh, but I do want to kind of touch on what he was saying in the Greek to kind of make this a little bit clearer to those who may not be uh, able to read Greek. And so it covers John 1, 1, where it says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, some may take that to mean, at least the Jehovah's Witnesses do, would take that to mean that the Word was a God. Brandon doesn't ascribe to the Jehovah's Witness faith, but he's leaning in that direction. So let's look at this verse and let's see if we can kind of understand a little bit clearly what's being said in the Greek and how it can make sense in the English. The Greek says, in arche ain halagas, kai halagas ain prostantheon, kai theos ain halagas. There's a couple of things that need to be touched on before we go into it, and that is, 
what some of these words that were said by the gentleman, what they mean and how important they are. So let's look at these. There are four things you need to be mindful of when looking at this passage as it pertains to the Greek. What's called the nominative, the predicate nominative, the articular, and the anarthrous. What the nominative is, is the case ending of a noun whose primary function is basically to indicate what the subject of the sentence is. Now, it's real important to understand in Greek, word order is not as important as it is in English. Oftentimes, you'll see the words kind of mixed around a little bit, but it doesn't change the meaning of the sentence. There are times where the word order is used or changed to kind of show emphasis, and that's something that we're going to actually touch on in this verse as well. Now, the predicate nominative is, is basically the same, approximately the same as the subject. It is joined by an equative verb such as is, was, are. And what it does is it normally describes a category that the subject belongs to. So if I were to say Jesus is Lord, well, <clears throat> if Lord is the predicate nominative, then it's describing what Jesus is, the category that Jesus belongs to. Then you have what's called the articular. All that is is just a word or a noun that is preceded by the definite article, the. On the flip side, you have what's called something that's anarthrous, which means it's just simply not preceded by the definite article. With those definitions in mind, let's go ahead and look at the first clause of the first stanza of John 1.1. Anarche ain halagas, in the beginning was the word. Now, if you notice, the halagas is the nominative. How do we know? Well, because the ha right before lagas is what's called the definite article. In Greek, there are 24 ways to say the. You've got the nominative, the genitive, the accusative, and the dative in the singular, and you have those same forms in the plural. But those are the masculine forms. Then you have the feminine form of each, as well as the neuter form. So there's 24 different ways to say the, which kind of, which kind of helps indicate who and what you're talking about. And so in this first stanza, you see the halagas being identified as the nominative. Then in the second stanza, we have kai halagas ain pros tantheon, which is, and the word was with God. You'll notice I have the the there because there is a definite article before theos or before theon indicating the definiteness of the word God. So, and the word was with the God. We don't say the God because you don't say, you don't, you don't in English use the the before a proper noun. So the same holds true in, the, in this particular stanza. And so now we get to the third stanza, the third clause, where a lot of the controversy comes in, but the Greek settles it. Kaiphaeus and halagas, which is translated, and the word was God. But I want you to notice something kind of interesting. If we were to render it word for word, it would say, and God was the word because the order says kai and theos god ain was halagas the word but your english version does does not say and god was the word rather it says and the word was god well there's a there's a legitimate reason for why that's done but before we go to it i want to focus on some of the definitions that are present there so we'll know what we're working with kai theos ain halagas notice what the nominative is we've already established that the nominative is halagas, the word. It is articular. You see the uh, ha, which is the word the. You see that pointed out, but you also see how theos is the predicate nominative. Theos is anarthrous, which means it doesn't have the definite article there. Now, don't be confused by the fact that it doesn't have a definite article there to think that it ought to be translated as a God. The reason is because in Greek, there is no indefinite article. There is no a, a dog, a cat. You would just simply leave the definite article off. But in this case, the definite article is, is off, but we would still translate it as the God or God. <clears throat> and we'll get to the reason why in just a second, but just want you to pay attention as to which parts of speech are indicated here. Again, the halagas, the nominative, the word is the subject of the entire uh, sentence. In the beginning was the word, 
So the word is the subject. God is the predicate nominative. Again, the predicate nominative describes the category to which the subject belongs to. And so the question becomes now in the, in the third stanza, the third clause, why would God in the Greek be pushed towards the front? Why, why would that happen? In Greek, you would use word order for a sentence oftentimes to give an emphasis on something. So in this case, the position of theos adds emphasis on the essence of the nominative or the subject. In other words, <clears throat> theon or theos, God is emphasized, emphasizes what the word is. In other words, uh, theos emphasizes what the word is. The word is God. In the video, you'll notice him talking about a preverbal predicate nominative. All that simply is, is just using the definition that we have already. Preverbal just means it's before, it precedes a verb. And so there's a rule in Greek that, that kind of governs how we handle this. It's called Colwell's construction. And it talks about how you want to identify the predicate nominative and the nominative. And so how this applies here is going back to the text that theos is in the predicate nominative. It is an arthris and comes before the verb. So therefore, Colwell's construction comes in. So because of the rule and because of the construction, we know that the word theos is emphasizing what the subject is, what category it belongs to, in this case, the word. So the word belongs to the category of God, or as we would say, the word was or is God. And that's also verified as we read further on in John 1. But I want to point you to something else that's kind of interesting that would show someone's inconsistency if they want to render this as a God. And we're just going to use John 1 1 again. Anarche in halagas, kai halagas, ain prostum theon, kai theos ain halagas. Notice there are four definite articles presented. Halagas, the first portion, kai halagas, there it is again. Tan theon, well, the tan represents a definite article, the, and then at the end also you see halagas again. So there's four uh, definite articles present. At the end, you'll see an anarthrous uh, noun, that is kai theos, which is anarthrous because there is no definite article. But something else should grab your attention. Look again at the very beginning. It says in arche, which is in the beginning. But this now, but this now is anarthrous, meaning there is no definite article before this. So why doesn't Brandon Tatum or anyone else who doesn't believe that this verse is teaching the Trinity, why wouldn't they render in a beginning? Because that would make sense then, since there is no definite article and following his logic and his reasoning, that there should that it should be in a beginning. But we all, as, as well as he, would render it as in the beginning. Because this follows the same rule that we're talking about. And so the problem is this. When you have a theology that you want to hold fast to, you'll ignore someone attempting to show you how the language is saying otherwise. And again, no matter where you were taught or, or, or what denomination you have or what theology you hold to, you don't interpret the Greek in light of your theology. You don't interpret the Greek in light of English. It's the opposite. You interpret the English or even your theology or doctrine in light of what the Greek says. The problem that you're going to have is if you interpret something a particular way, you have to remain consistent. And you can't interpret this to mean that it's not God because what happens is in this same passage, as you go down, you'll run, you'll find yourself contradicting yourself because of this. The example of RK is one where you, inter where you interpret as the beginning. Then you also find out where you see uh, in verse four, you'll see uh, paratheo, which is from God, but you don't say from a God. I'm sorry, and that was in verse six, but in verse four, you'll see the word zoe, which is life. And you don't say a life. Also with the word John. John is also an arthrus, and you don't interpret and you don't interpret it as a John, you interpret it as John, the John. And so you lose consistency in following Brandon's logic. Also, there's over 280 times in the New Testament where Theos. Uh, does not have the definite article in front of it. And in these cases, consistency matters. The language matters. The problem is this, though. <clears throat> Pride can be an awful thing. In one portion of the video, he's having to explain to him something in Greek, and Brandon's only answer is no. 
No, no. And I can relate because I've had people on, even on this channel who would leave comments and you try to explain it to them in, in the Greek and their response is no, 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 you're wrong. And they would try to point to a different passage. Well, we're, we're dealing with this particular text. The text matters and so we'll get to the other passage later. And so if the passage is being laid out in Greek, your comments of no or your theology or your doctrine or whatever it is does not take precedence over the word of God. Amen. And so pride ends up causing folks to see things in an inconsistent and wrong-headed fashion. About 1978-79, I got into a fight with a guy named Pula. First of all, you don't want to fight a guy named Pula, a guy with a prison name. He's in third grade. But the fight was initiated over some girl who had these little balls on the side of her head. It was a, a whole Princess Leia thing for me. But anyway, I'm trying to save face and show how tough I was. And so I'm fighting Pula and Pula picks me up, spins me around and throws me in the bushes. I'm not having that. I didn't like that. And so what did I do? I get up and go back after Pula. Now, he just threw me in the bushes with ease, I might add. And so what does Pula do again? Picks me up, spins me around, throws me in the bushes again. Something clicked that time, okay, I'm outmatched. I'm fighting a losing battle. I better get something about myself. I better either get a little stronger, uh, get some wits about myself and not fight poorly, at least not now, or at least not by myself. The same thing holds true when someone in this case is trying to show Brandon or anyone else what the languages are saying. You'll hear me say this over and over again, how important the languages are. And so in this case, You've seen how just the Greek verifies who God is. And of course, even in English, obviously, because if you read down further, it's going to tell you that this word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld him uh, and his glory uh, as the son of God. And so holding to doctrine, ignoring what the scriptures say, especially if you can find out what they say in the Greek is just foolishness. And so what does the Bible say about a person who despises wisdom and instruction? I don't I don't listen to doctrine and none of this stuff. Not dealing with a rookie, man. <laughs>